It was a real regime almost. Oh, hell no. They're talking about me. All I needed was one ball. The science of training. And I know you don't think it's a sport. All right, we're here with Dr. O'Connor again. Doc, how you doing, man? What's going on, Vlad? Always a pleasure, man. So today we're watching a special video that actually uh, you pointed out to me. It's by Vice Media and it's called How Steroids Became More Popular Than Heroin. And it's a crazy video, but why did you want to, uh, why did you, why did that video specifically was like resonated with you? Why did you want to talk about it? Well, you know, it's amazing. So they're, they're talking about what's going on in the UK, right? You know, they talk about America too, but it's, it's amazing that with so much, so many people on steroids and they, they're going to review some of the epidemiological, you know, some of the public health data, you know, like the scientific data, like how many people do it, who's doing it. And they did an amazing job. She's a researcher and she did an amazing job about talking the talking points about steroid use and how big it's become. It's bigger than heroin. But like, is that true? So I thought no better. Sounds crazy. There's no better collaboration than GI and the antibiotic doc. Absolutely. So let's get right into it. We're going to watch the video. And we're going to comment on the video and then we'll, I guess, we'll make, we'll let the people decide if they agree or disagree. I'm J.S. Raffaele. I've spent years writing about drugs, why people use them, and why our governments chose to declare war on them. So let's get a sense of the numbers here. How many people are using steroids? So it's a really difficult one to quantify in terms of, you know, actual numbers. In the UK alone, they estimate around, if not more than, uh, one million people using steroids of some form regularly. Uh, and in the US, uh, it's estimated between three and four million. So if we're talking about a million people in the UK and like up to four million people in the US, that's more popular than heroin. Yeah. So Doc, so, you know what I noticed? I noticed about the video in the beginning, they talking about the war on drugs by the government, right? Like the, the government always issues the war. We're talking about US, for example, right? like on marijuana in the beginning, right, on different drugs, and of course steroids fall under that situation as well. Now, what is your take on a war on drugs by the government? And especially, because I know marijuana is being legalized almost in every, in every state it's becoming legal, 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 right? So like, federally it's not legal, but it's statewide it's becoming legal. But what do you think on a war on drugs, and do you feel like it's good or bad, especially when it comes to steroids? Well, well the war on drugs is, is amazing. So if you look at drugs like, 40 years ago, there was a war on marijuana, which is ridiculous, right? So here's yeah. marijuana. So now now there's, you know, there's going to be a, the heavy duty drugs, you know, heroin, meth and crack, like those are heavy duty drugs. No one's going to say they're not. But as far as the details and the data, you know, should we decriminalize those drugs? And has the UK and America moved and the UK has right other parts of the world to decriminalize and different states have. And we haven't, we have, we have regions in America where they're allowing supervised heroin use to be injection sites. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, are we going to get there with steroids? If you look at the numbers of who uses steroids in America, this is a fascinating thing. So she talks about the UK is 1 million and that's the UK. That may be accurate. I don't know where they got the number from. When you look at America, we say that 4 million number. Now that, listen, that number is from like 10 years ago. It's not been updated. If you look at Dr. Dr. Shalander Bashain at Harvard, where we, we've, we've been working on steroids from an academic mm -hmm. standpoint, myself, Dr. Pope, these are colleagues, right? And we've written articles in different trade journals, you know, academically about steroid use. If you look at the numbers, no one has updated these numbers, Vlad, in the last five years or 10 years. Now, listen, Dr. Bashane, this is from Harvard. You could fact check this. He, he, he estimates that up to 3.5 to 5% of the world's population is either used or using PEDS. So in America, what would that be in the millions, roughly? Oh my Lord. 
I, I here's my estimate. Oh, we're talking. We're talking ten million roughly. Well, right, right. So my estimation in America, when I go to all the gyms and I'm out there and I see them and I know what's going on, uh, my estimation in America, this is just a, a crude, rough estimation, is potentially up to 15 to 20 million people, including women. Wow. That's a lot. So so this is why I, this is why I want to do this with you, Vlad. So we go point by point. Look, she, this woman is awesome. These guys did a great job. Sure. So I just want to, but I want to fact check, and I'm sure they're going to appreciate this because they're going to see this. So I'm sure they're going to, they're going to appreciate our scientific input. So, and but then if, now. If you, if you were to give, I'm sorry, Doc, if you were to give just a yes or no answer to war on drugs, good or bad, what would you say? Well, you know, it's never one simple answer for me, Vlad. The war on drugs, I'm a science guy. Mm -hmm. So the war on drugs is a failing war. Mm -hmm. So we have to change. We, we have to become more progressive. And I don't I don't want to talk about narcotics and amphetamines and, you know, classic drugs like, you know, heavy duty drugs. But mm -hmm. if you ask my opinion on anabolic steroid use, we need we need to do something. And it's we need to potentially decriminalize it. That's a good answer. I think it's it's a valid point. I'm sure a lot of people would agree. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, you ready to go back to the video? Let's go. A variety of studies have kind of shown that the most prevalent reason for uptake uh, is to do with aesthetics. Over fifty percent of people have generally uh, suggested that their use is linked to their body image. Um, other things are like non-competitive bodybuilding, uh, sport performance, work performance, sex drive, maintaining youth, and also a small population uh, using for sort of self-prescribed hormone replacement therapy. It's a real variety, but I think body image and aesthetic is, is definitely a main factor, particularly when we're looking at the sort of increasingly young population of young men. Generally talking, late teens to mid twenties tends to be a starting point. So doctor, uh, statistically. I wanted to, like, did you hear what they were saying? Like how young of the men taking these uh, steroids, 18 to 22 and twenties, you know, um, that's interesting, right? This is like, we're not talking about necessarily professionals. We're talking, and also, they were talking about people who use it specifically for aesthetics, right? For the looks. Not so much for the performance. If we're talking about the bulk of the people, right? Um, do you agree with that? Do you see that in your practice a lot? Basically, men do it for their own personal sort of like, or what they, what they think it, it society wants to see from them, in a sense. So so this is, this is the take-home message for this part of absolutely Vlad. So we know from the data, she's right, that men and women, they're using steroids, they're regular people. If you go to the regular person, the regular mom and pa that's older in America, and you say, who do you think uses steroids? They're going to think Barry Bonds. They're going to think NFL. They're gonna, right. this, this is fascinating. So yeah. the data is overwhelming. It's like 99.999% of people that are using steroids are regular people and regular guys and girls. It is young. Social media is huge. So yeah. that's the first part of the answer. So it's, it's, it's non-athletes. They're doing it for boom, just like I did. They're doing it for personal reasons not for profession now bodybuilders and strong men and all these pros these guys represent a tiny fraction of right. who's doing steroids that's the whole take home message Vlad that's why it's so important for us to get out the message with the data to the right people the politicians and to the regular people that don't they don't know this if you're in Redcon if you're in the gyms that I go to I'm down here in South Florida if you walk around the gyms everyone knows this but if you're a regular person working in in America, in corporate America, if you're an IT guy and you're, you're not in this world, you, you're going to think, wow, the regular guy that does, he doesn't do steroids. And that's where it's changed.
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So why do you think they do it? I mean, do they do it because they see it as a shortcut to the physique that they desire? Because technically speaking, they're young, they have decent genetics, they can just achieve that. Except they're not going for the professional look, you know what I mean? They're not going for the professional sports, right? So this is basically a shortcut, a shortcut aspect for them, right? No, 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 no. They're, 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 when you use steroids, it's a slippery slope. You know, a lot of the young guys, you know, she's kind of wrong. A lot of the young guys, they don't go right to steroids. They do SARMs. Right. Okay. So, so it's, it's not, but it's not so clean. And we don't really know the data for this. But men and women use performance enhancing drugs, not just steroids. You know, they're doing clenbuterol. They're doing thyroid preparations. They can do SARMs, which, you know, pro-hormones. It's, it's a very, it's a, it's, a, it's a spectrum, right? So they're mm-hmm. doing it, Vlad, because they want to enhance what they're doing. It's not just a, it's, you can, you, and it, 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 they're miracle drugs, Vlad. They're, steroids are miracle drugs. So, and they're so easy to get now because of, because of social media. And, and this is why we need to get this information out. out. But what I'm saying, why not just go to the gym and just, and just, you know, I everyone mean, steroids gym, up. Everyone, because it's also like the lemmings, you know, if you look around, the, all the lemmings are going into the sea. It's like everyone, everyone, it's, it's, it, it is a trend that so many people are doing it, Vlad. It's being, it's been accepted. Interesting. Okay, Doc, let's go back to the video. In, historically, we've always looked at how social media and the media have an impact on female body image, right? But I don't think the same attention has been paid to male body ideals as of yet. I think we're getting there, but I think there's still this very much like normalized approach to what the male body looks like. And that's not necessarily like super muscular, but it's still definitely defined like it's it's someone that works out i think is is the norm that we're presented and you've got more and more shows like love island that pitch these people men and women as everyday normal members of society Uh, what are the potential dangers of these drugs and like are the rumors true do they shrink your penis (laughs) no they don't shrink your penis um they do shrink your balls um, and there, there is, you know, potential issues relating to... Doc, is she right about that? Yeah, so it's it's interesting, you know, when you go into the health stuff, she's a criminology, right? So she's an expert in criminology. She's obviously not a PhD scientist or in the medical world. So anabolic steroids, they, they, they don't re- affect the penis. They, they affect the testicles because your hypothalamus and your pituitary and your testicles will become disconnected when you're on these medications. And then that's the, the, the problems when these young men, when they come off and there's a role for post-cycle therapy, but there's not much science that's consistent. So they come off the steroids and they want their testicles to come back. And Vlad, so many men suffer because they're shut down and they don't come back. So she, she's right on that. Um, but you know, it's interesting, she brought up social media, right? And it seems like social media these days, even though it's so huge, it's basically a reason for so many people being unhappy. You know what I mean? Some people go to steroids to make their physiques because they want to catch up to somebody's social media. Some people, you know, they overspend because they want to catch up to a lifestyle, right? Some people go to uh, therapy because they're depressed because of social. Like, so it seems like social media is the underlining for so many problems in today's world, but yet everybody's on it, right? I mean, Vlad, this this world has changed. You know, we're we're, we're very responsive, and she talked about narcissism, and and she mm-hmm. says it. You know, she says it kind of tongue in cheek. I think she's just very. She's adorable, like, you know, we're very narcissistic. Well, of course we're not, we're human beings. We, we look at this and we wanna see the sexy person, the crazy stuff. We wanna keep getting that dopamine drive. So that's okay. an answer. When you're in the gym and you feel great, if you could take anything to go to the next level, it makes you feel great. Steroids are used because 
You could bench a little more. You could feel a little more bad. And now it's, and I've done them, right? So, and, and it's a slippery slope. It's like, well, everyone else is using them. All right. That's the issue. All right. Okay, let's go back to the video. One of the most, like, commonly talked about side effects to do with steroids is going to be aggression, right? But actually, there's kind of real difficulty, like, quantifying that in the academic world. Like, there's definite uh, evidence of, like, impacts on mental health and mood changes, but I don't think it can be quantified in, like, a way of just saying roid rage. There's, like, significant research that shows like heart related diseases being increased also things like liver toxicity like kidney dysfunction so there are like major things that can go wrong i've personally heard stories of people who've gone into gyms and seen lines of five or so guys lined up and someone going along and injecting them one by one using the same needle we promote so much about needle hold on hold on drugs. now that's what we gotta stop Okay, that's where we have to stop. This is where she's, this is where clearly she's in a territory that she doesn't know what she's talking about. So, yes, anabolic steroids have wide reaching effects when it comes to the heart, the reproductive system, to the kidney, acne, tits. I deal with it all day. And with it, when it comes to roid rage, when it comes to roid rage, it's, it's, there's no data to support it. It's, if you're an asshole, you're an asshole on steroids. Okay. <laughs> so, and, 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 and you could look at all the data, but then of course there's trend. And if you take trend, the nicest guy in the world is going to be an asshole. But what she's, and, and I agree with her on the differentiation that there's medical from the chin down, there's medical disease, but from the mm -hmm. chin up, it's going to be kind of wishy-washy. Like, is it Roy? Wait, so, so, so trend trend does make you angry. Is that true? So what no, saying? yeah, no, nobody. You know, when I talk, when I've done research and I've done videos on Roy Rage and articles, you know, with muscular development, you know, twenty years ago or what, fifteen years ago, it, it, it you know, you, you'd get the haters coming out. Doctor, you don't know what you're saying, Doctor. Roy Rage is not true. It's an asshole on steroids. Be careful. Don't say bad stuff, Doctor. And I, whoa. So there's no there, there's a lot of research, but it's very independent research on roid rage and how it affects men from a criminal standpoint mm -hmm. and, and, and how from a sociological standpoint of a, a physiological. But when you look at the there's no data to because you're talking about people's personalities and sure. it's like saying. It's like saying that women that are going through, you know, menstrual cycle, you know, that, that she's she's bitchy and she's moody and there's data for this. You're something wrong with you, honey. So it's like it, it's you have to. It's common sense. I mean, if you're manipulating your hormones, it's going to affect your personality. I mean, so she stayed away from that. But let me tell you something where I want to nip it in the bud because I don't want people to think that steroid users are are running around with dangerous, st stupid behaviors as the guy that walks in the room and mm -hmm. he saw someone in using the same needle to inject 10 guys. Listen to this. There's data for that 20 years ago where we were concerned in the beginning of looking at academic data for steroid users that they were sharing needles and they're going to get hepatitis C, hepatitis B, and HIV. And let me tell you the data. There is some proof of this. But if you take care of steroid users like I do as a day job, let's give these guys some respect. They don't share needles. She's wrong. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. I'm saying that if the ma and pa sees this documentary, they need to hear commentary from me saying that, please, these guys are not that crazy. That's a very small percent. Men that use steroids, they, they realize, they realize that they, they can communicate disease. They know not to share needles. So I want that to be known that right. this is a commentary. 
when they're purporting that on this documentary. I think she's doing a great job, but she's completely wrong. There's no supportive data that that's really happening to a significant degree. Mm -hmm. One last thing I want to, before I move on, uh, you mentioned trend might make you angry. What is trend used for? Why do, like, what is it used for? Why do people take it? Oh my Lord, trend, trend ball and acetate and ananthate is arguably the most powerful and more, more comp, it's, it's the more commonly used drug for gaining mass. It makes you hard. So this is used in mass cycles to get big and strong. Power lifters love it. Strong men like it too. In addition to the test and the anadrol and the old school Dianabol, but it's used also, you know, when you look at steroids, there's some classically for cutting and for bulking. Mm -hmm. Trend is used for both. Mm -hmm. And, and um, it's absolutely... Like why, why does it make you angry? Does it is it does it is it is it, is it, is it a mental thing or trend, kind of? Yeah, trend ball, trend trend is so powerful. You know, no, no one's going to be able to answer that directly. I mean, trend is a nor nineteen derived drug, and it's so strong that it, it it produces so much growth. It's so powerful that it, it crosses the blood-brain barrier and it really does change personalities. No no expert that's that's watching this and giving comments is going to disagree with me that it's not a little anovar, it's not a little test or equipoise. Trend is trend. Gotcha. She, okay, she, Dr. She, she doesn't know that. She unfortunately right. is she's not differentiating the, the the real details of the steroid world because she she's not in it. Sure, sure. Okay, let's uh, let's continue watching this sort of harm reduction initiative. So that's stuff like uh, needle exchanges. Like if you're looking at a group of predominantly men who look like the epitome of what we consider healthy. You know, they work out a lot, they eat well, they are low body fat, their BMI is on point, all of those kind of things, and then you say. Oh, you know, you need to go to a needle exchange place, same as everyone that uses heroin. I know that some needle exchanges across the UK, at least, are reporting that the majority of people using their services are steroid users now. But I think there's still this like general reluctance to engage in, yeah, kind of healthcare generally. And I think that's partially because of this like stigma um, and partially because they think they're going to be judged. Um, as well by, you know, healthcare professionals. I think generally as well, steroid users maybe feel like healthcare professionals don't get it. They don't understand it. It's not something that they're trained in very often. It's not something that they maybe understand the motivators for. And so I think that hey, that, general... That was interesting. Um, so if we go by what she's saying, then basically all of the bodybuilders who are using enhancements are drug users is that what she's basically saying right so so th that's this is the whole thing going on in this country that i want to bring attention to Th the initial data really lumped together heroin illicit drug users you know illicit drug users heroin sure. users crack cocaine alcoholics and steroids this is this has pissed off a lot of guys <laughs> because sure, yeah. it's not it's not true. So this is where we need more education and more academics and we need more funding for really researching what the fuck is going on with these with with your with everyone's on steroids and don't piss them off. Let, let's really don't. So how many patients that I've had that are suffering with comorbid depression, anxiety, and steroid withdrawal have had mm -hmm. some suicidal thoughts or suicidal potential actions, and they've survived, and they're now in a drug rehab. Listen, and they're in the drug rehab, and I work with the parents, with the, the patient, the kid, the guy in a drug rehab, and the psychiatric doctors, they, they don't know anything about anabolic steroids she said it right there the doctor the doctors don't know about steroids that they they, mm -hmm. they lump together you're a steroid user we're going to put you in the group 
with heroin users. Makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. We need to we need to move forward on this right. academically. These 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 doctors, you know, they need to really understand how big this is and how common and how normal it's become normalized. But it's also like, you know, I just called somebody who's using steroids a drug user. It's, it's a little bit strange to me. It's like saying somebody who smokes weed, oh, he's a drug addict. You know what I mean? It's like, it, okay, but it's not, you know what I mean? It's just weird. It sounds strange. You know you what I mean? Can't, it you, it, right. it, it's, not, it's not appropriate. It's not appropriate. It's not appropriate. I agree with you. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep going. Okay. Whilst those like old, out of date drug laws are in place. We've talked a lot about men, but are women using these drugs as well? In a much smaller way, the estimates are generally between the user population being between sort of 95 and 98% male. So it is definitely a predominantly male thing. And that will be because, um, so you know how we said anabolic androgenic steroids. Doc, what do you think about those stats for women? Is it, do you think she's accurate there or not? Love, <laughs> Vlad. This is something that I don't know, but if you look around, Vlad, I mean, we're you and I, we're, we're in the trenches here, right? I mean, I'm, we're in the trenches. I don't know, Vlad. I think it depends on where you are. If you're in South Florida and you go to the gyms, no names mentioned, and you go to, I mean, you're going to see, I don't think as much, it's not as much as the men, but... I see a lot of women that are on baby doses of steroids, <laughs> at least. Mm, baby I, doses. Mean, every, I mean, it's incredible, Vlad. Everyone is on steroids right now. What can like users and I guess us as a society do to like not stigmatize this sort of drug use, but to like mitigate the dangers and make it more safe? Under like our current laws and regulations. So as we currently are, um, then yeah, stuff like needle exchanges, Increasing education, we really, really want to change the state of play with these drugs. Um, same with any drugs. If we, you know, legalized and regulated, then a lot of the risks are going to be mitigated. That's it, that's that's the end of the video. But same question to you, doctor. Um, what do you think can be done? Now that we watch this video, right? She, she didn't actually offer no solution at all, right? But like, in your opinion, is there a solution to uh, make things better for those who use steroids and those who don't use steroids and the society in general. Is that what can yeah. be done? Well, the, you know, the, for everything's education. We need so we need to spend more resources on really understanding who uses steroids in our country. What's the demographic breakdown? We know the risks. We don't need to study that. And I mean, heart disease. We know that if you're on it long enough. You're going to mess up your brain and you're going to be on it forever. It's going to impair potentially your fertility system, right? So we know that if you're on it long enough, you're going to be on testosterone the rest of your life. But I think we, we need to spend, we need to put, and I'm going to do everything I can on this, you know, from a research standpoint, we need to convince the academic centers of excellence that we need to put more attention in, into this. We need to sit consider uh, decriminalizing it and we need to continually educate healthcare providers on exactly what what is the data who's using it why they're using it and to help them to help them do you think that um it's hard to know the real data like you mentioned and also the real facts because the steroid users themselves they don't want to necessarily talk about these things they don't want to reveal a lot of the stuff because they don't feel comfortable talking about it. Like, just for the sake, like many people they don't want to talk about their medical problems or their issues they're going through, right? Maybe, maybe it's the same thing. They just don't want to admit it, you know? But Vlad, the young guys are open to talk. They're open to talk. The young guys want to talk. Uh, they talk to me. So if we had more healthcare providers that are more progressive and they were really more willing to understand this and realize that the numbers are huge, and that it's not going to go away, and that you you need to understand what to do, and we have to consider decriminalizing it, and we have to consider, you know, it's a very close walk. I mean, I don't want to say decriminalize it. Let me open up the clinic and start doling out 
test and Anavar and Anadrol and Trend. Right. I'm, I'm not doing that. No one right. is going to do this. And, and, you know, we already have clinics in this country called anti-aging clinics that will give you more testosterone than you need. They'll give you decodurabilin for your shoulders. That's a strong steroid. They'll give you Anavar. You know, they're going to give you growth hormone. So I could go to an anti-aging place and do a cycle of steroids that I that I used to do back in the day. That I, you know, Anavar, testosterone, growth hormone, and that's enough for me. So it's like we really have legal steroids in America, but it's very expensive because those clinics can be, you know, upwards of five thousand dollars a year. So it's it's cheaper to get, you know, with a growth hormone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's cheaper to get it in the streets, which is dangerous. Look, Vlad, we need to come together and realize steroids are bigger than heroin users now. Wow. That's big. Mm -hmm. That that was that was the title of their film. And right. that we have data that we don't really understand. Because look at this lady. She did a good job. Vice TV did a great job. But it, a lot of it ran off the rails, and it's cringy. Yeah, a lot of it did. And also, you know, looking at this video, basically, it seems like it's going to be, you know, quite some time until steroids become less taboo, you know? And at the same time, it's going to be quite some time until we're going to reach a point where it's going to be an open conversation, you know, about it in the, in the mainstream society. It, it feels like that to me. You know, but, you know, if you look at Rich Piana opened up, he's the first guy in the world that opened up the openness upstairs. You know, he said, hey, guys, what's going on? He leaned over. Remember Rich? I mean, I met Rich once, you know, in person. He's a super cool. He's a life size, you know, larger than life. And Rich is leaning over and, the, hey, guys, what's going on? Good morning. He's in his kitchen and he's talking about he just came off of this and he's on HCG. And everyone came. Do you remember how big Rich was? I mean, his personality. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Rich came out. And also Boston Lloyd was a guy that came out, too. Yeah, I mean, there's been a there's been a quite a lot of people that came out openly about it, right? A lot of personalities, Tony Huge, obviously, who, who we both know. A lot of people, you know, they they came out, they they openly talk about it. But what I'm talking about more like accepted by the majority of the people. You know what I mean? It's still it's still gonna be taboo for I think for for quite some time. But but, but I might be wrong. Right. So so it's 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 hurting it's hurting our society, like illicit drugs there's there's hurt and and we we need to accept that and we need to study it and to make decisions share decision making with people in our society for physicians healthcare providers to help and not turn them away you don't turn away a heroin user why would you turn away a steroid user i don't understand that I agree with you. And that's why there's only a few people like you in the country, right, that actually think that way from the right. medical field. From the medical field, I mean, from the actual, you know, doctors. So it will take some time to, uh, you know, to change that mindset, I feel like, in the medical community especially. You know what I mean? It's, get, it's getting much better. My colleagues are coming right along. <laughs> Sounds good, Doctor. Well, listen, it was, it was a lot of fun, man. I had, I had a great time uh, looking over this with you. Wow, that was awesome, man. Thank you so much. Awesome. I want you guys to just, you know, spread the word on this stuff to the world. Yeah. Because there's a lot of work to be done, and I'm, I'm here to work with you guys.